Ever since Christopher Columbus discovered the New World for Spain in 1492, for the 350 years after that, Spain maintained a massive empire that stretched from what is now present-day Mexico to present-day Florida. From that core in Mexico City, however, explorers ventured north along a vast array of road networks that connected them to the various parts of that empire. One of those roads is called El Camino Real, the Royal Road. Today we're going to travel from the end of that road at Natchitoches, Louisiana, down to Crockett, Texas, to see the first Spanish mission in the state of Texas. <laughs> Fort Jean Baptiste State Historical Park is a great place for you to come and see a reconstructed French outpost. Here in Natchitoches, Louisiana, which is the oldest permanent community settlement in the old Louisiana Purchase. A French Canadian by the name of Saint Denis came down the river from Mobile, Alabama in order to build this fort as a protection against the Spanish. We're here on the edge of Old New Spain. It was the Texas province at the time in the late 17th century. Life at a fort was very simple. There weren't many supplies. It was many, many, many miles back to Mobile, Alabama and some of the more established French communities. So it was incredibly important that they traded with the local Native American tribes to get the sustenance that they need, as well as living off the land. A fort like this is very simple, a, a piquet uh, fence around the edges, simple wooden uh, dwellings for them to sleep in and, and have church service in. Uh, missionaries and friars were definitely a big part of the life here as they were trying to uh, bring Catholicism to the local Native American tribes both on the Spanish and on the French sides of the line. These stockade fences were for defense of the fort, not only against Spanish, but native raids and anybody that would come along and try to get in on the business of the fort. The fort here represents the easternmost terminus of what's known as El Camino Real, the Royal Road, or the old San Antonio Road. It was a road that was essentially game trails and trails used by Native Americans for probably hundreds if not thousands of years before any Western settlers came. But the road was what critically connected Mexico City and the French Empire here in the Louisiana Purchase in the Mississippi River Valley. It was an important road for uh, Louis uh, and Saint Denis to go to Mexico and attempt to trade, which was actually illegal at the time, and they arrested him at the border. He ended up marrying the commandant's uh, daughter and coming back and becoming commandant of this place. The geology, and therefore the topography, of this part of Louisiana very much influenced why the Camino Real ended here at the river. The Red River and its many tributaries and, and channels has been important for commerce and for trade for probably thousands of years. The cotton fields of East Texas used to barge their cotton traffic down the Red River into the Mississippi Valley. Um, but it's a very complex area in terms of the hydrology. The rivers are actually very dynamic. They change over time, they fill up, and they move. And as a result, this area of Natchitoches has a very interesting history. The Red River that used to flow through here years ago was actually naturally diverted from the western channel, which was free at the time, to the eastern channel where it exists today. And that western channel, which has now been cut off from the river, is called the Cane Lake. Here along the historic waterfront in Natchitoches, you find Cane River Lake. Cane River Lake is a 30 plus mile long lake that used to be a part of the actual Red River system itself. Back at the turn of the century, the Red River was two channels, an eastern and western channel. 
And actually it was this western channel, the Cane River channel, that took most of the boat traffic for the Red River. The eastern channel was blocked by logs for many years. But today, because of geology, this part of the river has been cut off from the main river system, forming a lake. So we have Cane River Lake. The story of Cane River is one that really shows the unexpected consequences of man's changing of the natural landscape. When the log jam on the eastern channel was finally removed in the late 1800s, the river naturally shifted course and onto that side of the valley where flow had been restricted for so many years, rediverting the river away from the Cane River. In 1915, two dams were placed on the ends of the river to control the level of the water within it, and Cane River Lake was born. It's a great example of how sometimes when we do things to nature, we get unintended consequences of those actions. Here at Los Adias State Park, you can see pretty much what the old Camino Real may have been like when it first was used and French and Spanish first started traveling along its ranks. Probably no more than eight to ten feet wide, old game trails, Native American trails would have been used through miles and miles and miles of forest. In fact, it was over 800 miles to the nearest resupply point for the Spanish missionaries and soldiers stationed here at Adias. This was the easternmost front, the easternmost fort in New Spain's Texas province. And as such, it was the first capital of the province of Texas. Can you believe that on the hill behind me, here in Louisiana, sat the actual capital of Texas for 50 years, from the early 1700s to the 1770s? Hidden in the piney woods of East Texas is Toledo Bend Reservoir. It sits here right astride the Texas-Louisiana state line. And it's a mammoth. It's 65 miles long, 10 miles wide, covers 185,000 acres. And it's the fifth largest lake in all the United States. The largest man-made lake in Texas and in all of the South. Mission Nuevo Sonora de los Dolores is one of several missions the Spanish government authorized here in East Texas. This one's in St. Augustine, Texas. The mission served several purposes. The Franciscan friars and the missionaries that came out used these missions to attempt to, to Christianize the native population. They were also a stake in the ground for the Spanish government to tell the French government who two years prior had built Fort St. John Baptiste in Natchitoches that the Spanish were here to stay and don't cross our line to fortify their claim on the lands. The Spanish held this part of Texas up until the late 1700s when eastern settlers and the French began to move back in and reoccupy the western part of the Louisiana Purchase. The El Camino Real de la Tejas made a perfect highway for settlers and immigrants from the east coming into Texas. And soon in 1779, Nacogdoches was founded. Nacogdoches lays claim to the oldest continuously settled town in Texas. After Texas won its independence from Mexico and achieved nationhood in 1836, the few years in between, the Republic of Texas government began to put itself together. And one of the things that was chartered in 1845 was a university for the new republic. It was to be here in Nacogdoches. And the building behind me, the old university building, was chartered. Of course, it wasn't too long after that when Texas became a state of the United States. But this is still one of the only remaining that was chartered by the original Republic of Texas. And you can see it here in Nacogdoches.
French and Spanish explorers weren't the first people here in East Texas. In fact, the Caddoan people, a subset of the great mound builders of the Mississippian people, inhabited these lands between 500 and 1100 AD. They're typical of the mound builders because they build these ceremonial mounds. And here at Caddo Mounds State Park, you can see three such mounds. In the 19th century, the El Camino Real path was used as the, the San Antonio Road and was uh, trafficked by immigrants and travelers from the southeastern part of the United States, especially places like Tennessee and Kentucky. Joseph Rice and his family was one of those uh, immigrants coming into Texas in the early 1800s. And in 1838, he built this log home that you see here at Mission Tejas State Park. Homes like this were frequent stays for travelers as they traveled the long path to San Antonio and Austin and places beyond. Davy Crockett was one very famous traveler through here just before the fall of the Alamo. And the town of Crockett just down the road is named in his honor. Here at Mission Tejas State Park, you can see a recreation of the very first Spanish mission in Texas. In 1690, the Spanish government sent Franciscan friars up the El Camino Real into East Texas to here, just northeast of Crockett, Texas, to create the mission San Francisco de los Tejas. This was in order to solidify their hold on the area and help to convert and, uh, the local Native American tribes. The building of the San Francisco de los Tejas mission here near the Caddo people had unintended consequences. Sickness broke out amongst the people and before too long the trust in the Spaniard uh, Franciscan friars had turned to distrust. And as a result, by 1694, this mission had shut down. But because of the French incursion from the east, Spanish bolstered the area by creating more forts and missions. By 1763, and the Treaty of Paris was signed, France came back in and maintained control of this entire area. And from that point forward, Spaniards were no longer permitted to travel the El Camino Real. All of the missions here in East Texas like this one at Mission Tejas were shut down for good. Mm -hmm. 